I'd like to bring this uh, meeting to order, the Village of Villa Park Board of Trustees meeting, December 19th, 2022. Clerk Konecki, please call the roll. Trustee Salella. Here. <coughs> Trustee Corkery. Here. Trustee Kosar. Here. Trustee Kumar. Trustee Murphy. Here. Trustee Patrick. Here. President Kazon. Here. Will we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you please remain standing. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together this evening. May we have meaningful discussions that will help us to assist our village in these trying times. Help us to make the decisions that will affect the staff, directors, and residents of Villa Park. Guide us through the challenges we face, and may we approach each other with respect and kindness as one group. In your name, amen. Okay, we're going to move to item three, which is a life-saving award presentation to uh, our Lieutenant Brzezowski, Brz Brzezowski of our fire department, and we have uh, Chief Stapleton. Thank you, President Kazon. I got a great story that I want to share with you guys tonight. But first, the men and women of the Villa Park Fire Department work 24 hours on, 48 hours off. We invest tens of thousands of dollars in training them and providing them with the best possible equipment so they can, in turn, provide the best possible outcome for our residents during an emergency. <clears throat> What's unique about the fire service, as well as the police department, it's just because someone is off duty doesn't mean that they turn off their training like we turn off the light switch when we leave the office every night. And this brings me to a great story I want to talk, tell you about Lieutenant Ron Brzezowski. On the night of November 5th, while out for a team <coughs> dinner with his teenage daughter soccer team outside of St. Louis, Ron's daughter Nikki alerted him to a serious medical emergency with one of her teammates. Her teammate was choking, so Nikki's first reaction was to get dad, the firefighter because he'll fix it. Ron was able to successfully perform the Heimlich maneuver and dislodge the obstruction. And the girls went back to being girls on a soccer trip. And dad was shunned back to the parents' table. <laughs> what a great story. And that's why we're here tonight, to award Lieutenant Ron Brzezowski with the Life Saving Award. Lieutenant, on behalf of the Villa Park Fire Department, the village of Villa Park, We'd like to present you with this life-saving award presented to Lieutenant Ronald Brzezowski in recognition of your selfless and courageous act of rendering aid in a sudden and unexpected situation in November 2022, which resulted in the preservation of life. The Village of Villa Park Board of Trustees presented on December 19, 2022. <laughs> Chief and board for having me here tonight. Everybody's showing up. Uh, it was great to be one for one, <laughs> given the Heimlich maneuver out in public. So it worked out well for me. So thank you.
Okay, we'll move on to public comments on agenda items. Kirk Konecki and one signed up. Yes, Bob Wagner regarding 9B. Uh, Bob Wagner, 114 West Monroe. Um, to speak about our speaking support of uh, item 9B, which is the uh, resolution and approving an engineering services agreement with CDM Smith of Chicago, Illinois for the Great Separation Feasibility Study. Um, I know that this is part of the strategic plan for the village, uh, but as a member of the Bike, Pedestrian, and Transit Subcommittee, this is something that we have advocated for for a long time. Um, the, uh, I noticed in the, uh, in the memo, uh, it does mention that the work product will be produced in eight to nine months, but I didn't see anything in the specific agreement that set out the time span. So that, that's one question I had. Um, the Bike, Pedestrian, and Transit Subcommittee will be working on a walk-friendly community application again uh, sometime in 2023. And of course, um, having this in place will certainly enhance our application. So um, I'm hoping that the bike pedestrian and transit subcommittee can be kept in the loop and you know if there's appropriate for us to be involved in some way um i you know we, we would certainly appreciate it and uh that's all i had thank you okay thanks bob okay joe amore also 9b good evening joe amore 309 east maple villa park i'm also speaking on item 9b uh, as the chair of the, the Bike and Pedestrian Transit Subcommittee, uh, we met last Wednesday, but uh, time constraints kept us from taking official action on this uh, proposal. So uh, this is my personal opinion. Um, but as a matter of information, we did present uh, to the manager, the previous manager back in 2021, we had uh, worked on uh, this, this uh, issue. And we thought it best at that time that uh, we prioritize a pedestrian underpass at the metro station and one at Villa Avenue, not including Addison Road, which we suggested that um, the Union Pacific second train warning system be installed there. Uh, that information uh, was forwarded on to the interim manager in February of 2022 of this year and then uh, sent to uh, Manager Harline in uh, July. Uh, Based on that information, I'm sure that he's the one that's been driving this effort <laughs> to uh, get this into the first stage. So um, looking into this, uh, I was able to uh, retrieve those emails and pass uh, them along to the trustees this afternoon so that they could take consideration of what our product was um, before they took their vote. My idea was to think that we would best serve the public if we could separate the projects and do one project that would consider just the pedestrian underpasses at the Metro Station and Villain Avenue, and then a second the project to do the grade separations at the vehicular crossings and any additional pedestrian crossings they might not want to add. Uh, there's a number of reasons for this. Uh, there's a, lately, there's been a general re reluctance uh, from Union Pacific to add pedestrian underpasses anywhere on the right of way. Uh, this might have to do with their issues with Metro. Um, I believe you might be able to lower costs because the information that would need to be garnered to provide back to the board would be a much smaller amount if you're just considering those two projects uh, the, for the two underpasses. Uh, came to my attention last week, uh, actually this past weekend, that the in the Federal Register, they just published a $2.3 billion passenger railway projects uh, grant, and the applications have to be done and completed before March 7th. So um, to concentrate on the smaller project, I was warned that they, uh, you would probably need an army of consultants to fill out all those applications in the Federal Register. I did email copies to the manager and and the appropriate people for that. But um, once again, uh, to do the great separations on the streets, I would think that it would be better served to have a 
the Traffic and Safety Commission get involved with then and be able to provide their input towards the resolution of the uh, decision making. So um, one thing that I did look at the CDM company was that uh, they are con involved with other projects. They seem competent. Although one thing that I wanted to point out was that on their, um, when they put their project experience, the two projects they mentioned was the uh, Glen Ellen train station and pedestrian underpass and uh, the one in Elmhurst. That's a much more complicated projects because they're doing the stations in addition to the pedestrian underpasses. Even though those uh, were initiated before 2019, um, they're still just now getting at the phase two. And I, Elmhurst doesn't anticipate uh, getting theirs done until 2025. 30 seconds. Thank you. So uh, once again, uh, we do want to think that uh, we can get our accomplish our original goals of getting those two underpasses first by focusing on them. And you could also uh, consider whether CDM might be wi willing to help with the uh, notice of funding opportunities that was just presented last uh, Wednesday. It was in the Federal Register. So that's all I have. Thank you for your time. Great. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Okay, also okay. Reed Goodrich regarding 8B. Uh, the last time I spoke up here, I mentioned the uh, pension obligations uh, for the village. And uh, I see the uh, most recent budget notes have that number of $59 million. I'd also at one time questioned uh, uh, why the village trustees here would want to vote for an extra day of... of uh, vacation for the for the personnel I wasn't sure the value in that and but I understand that's been passed since my since I uh, last knew about it and I would like to ask you know was there any tangible return for that vote for the benefit of the village where there be any of you other than a charitable contribution that would lay down twenty dollars a hundred dollars and not expect something in return for that. Okay. So why wasn't it be a better idea, although it's perhaps a little late in the game, to take that money, of which apparently there's questionable value in terms of the, to the village, and put that toward the pension costs? Again, quoting from the budget, that's going to grow to uh, $171 million or so, give or take, you know, by 2040. So, I question that where the, there was a, uh, that was the best thing to do with the money, and certainly in my own opinion, didn't reflect the best, uh, uh, the best wisdom in approving that expense. Now, moving on. And as far as the details of the budget, I just glanced through this, and I'm looking at a uh, public affairs, other contractual services, $293,400. Information technology, other contractual services, $349,700, or about $643,000, give or take a few dollars. Does anybody know what's in there? I see that there's been a movement to Excel, or Microsoft, in the, pro, in the computers, and I know they charge a lot for fees and licenses. I can recommend a couple of alternatives, being Open Office and Google Docs, that are much less expensive. And in fact, I can tell you that Menards, as a business, uses Open Office. And I'm sure their affairs are as probably as just as sophisticated as Villa Park. And why those weren't considered, 
you know, it baffles me. It looks like a decision of uh, uh, of the uh, of the of the, that was the easiest to make. Okay, that's time. My time. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? No, I have no one else. Okay. We have any, anyone else would like to speak? Okay. With that, we will go on to item five: amendments to the agenda. Do you have any amendments? Trustee Kozar. We've got, uh, I haven't seen it on an agenda. So for the first time, we've got village commission reports. Mm -hmm. I think that should go after 10, so that should be renumbered 11. Because um, in 15A, it appears that there is a potential ordinance that we're voting on. Is that right? Or is that just an example in the, meaning, in the minutes? But in either event, um, we tend to always close out with the clerk's report, trustee's report, <coughs> president's report, manager's report. Uh, 15 should be put right after 10 and then everything else numbered accordingly. Okay. Um, is it a motion? Is that a motion on that? That would be a motion to move, yes. Motion to move 15 to 11. Okay. Can we have a second on that motion? <clears throat> Trustee Patrick? I'd like to second that. Okay. Any questions or comments on that motion? Yeah. Trustee Murphy? Yes, I'd like input from the village attorney on that. Uh, yes, there's that. this is just a decision for the board as to what order you would like to consider this item. Um, these reports, though, are not um, I, I, basically what the board is going to do is just accept these reports. There's going to be no further action on that. There's no ordinance approval or anything related to that. But if this board decides that this um, item on the agenda is better suited to be placed up above, uh, you know, that's for the board's decision. It's not uh, it's not dictated in our village code with respect to this commission report order and so it's a decision of the board okay okay any other comments hey clerk Kronecki, please hey trustee Silello. i had i still had a question oh sure go ahead. I'm, I'm just wondering if the author of this had a specific reason for the placement of it it it, <clears throat> it was manager new it's uh, yes, sir. so uh if you i mentioned this at several meetings that we were going to i was going to start putting reports from the commissions because the idea is to make sure that anything that their minutes their reports things that they ha are going on at the commission level get to the uh, elected officials so this is the first time uh and but it's just a re it's just minutes it's just a for the um uh, just for the board to read to read it into the record so that you know that it also gives us uh, an idea make sure that everyone's turning in minutes so I, it's, I understood that portion of it i just under just it was just why, questioning the, the why placement was it, of it it was uh, there a specific new. reason no it's it was new so i put it um it could go it doesn't matter to me if you want to put the commission reports which are directly from uh volunteers at the top there's i have no problem with that thank you <clears throat> okay, any other questions <clears throat> okay clerk Kinecki. Okay, Trustee Salella? Yes. Uh, Trustee Corkery? Yes. Trustee Kumar? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Kosar? Yes. President Kazone? Yes. Okay, so we will move 15 up to number 11. Um, I, any other amendments? I have one that I would like uh, someone to make a motion on. I'd like to move. No, you, oh, don't, no. you don't need to make a motion. You're just oh, doing. just on this one? Okay. All right, we are going to uh, delete 9C. Um, we would like, uh, we're verifying the dates of the joint review board and the public hearing. And we wanna make sure that the notices will get uh, sent out on time. So we will do away with 9C and that will be on the January 9th agenda to vote on. So we'll have the, the dates carved out on there. So we will not have 9C tonight. Okay, with that we will move to the consent agenda. Item 6A is approval of minutes from the December 12th, 2022 public hearing meeting, the committee of the whole meeting, and the regular board of trustee meeting on December 12th, 2022. 
and 6B, the bill listing for the week of December 12, 2022, in the total amount of $3,931,000. $117.26. We have a motion for the consent agenda. Trustee Corkery? I'll make that motion. Okay, we have a second. Trustee Kumar? Okay, questions or comments? <coughs> Clerk Krenicki. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee uh, Murphy? Yes. Trustee Salella? Yes. Trustee Kozar? Yes. Trustee Corkery? Yes. Trustee Kumar? Yes. Trustee Cassell? Yes. Okay, hey, that we moved item 7A is the first reading of ordinance to be codified. It's the ordinance of the village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, reducing the number of class B liquor licenses. Major Harley. Uh, Ardmore Liquors, previously located at 405 Ardmore, North Ardmore Avenue, closed for business in early 2022, and the class B license has been forfeited. The license needs to be removed from the liquor licenses uh, that are issued in, uh, and available in the village. With this ordinance, the maximum number of Class B licenses available is eight. Approval of this ordinance is recommended by the Local Liquor Control Commission. Thank you. Trustee Kumar. I'd like to make a motion to waive the second reading. First reading. First reading. First reading. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we have a mo uh, motion to waive the first reading of the ordinance. We have a second. Trustee Corkery. Okay, hey, questions or comments? Clerk Konecki, this is uh, to waive the first reading. Okay, Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Kosar? Because I have a liquor license, I will recuse myself. Thank you. Uh, Trustee uh, Kumar? Yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Salella? Yes. Trustee Corkery? Yes. President Cassell? Yes. Okay, so with that, uh, do we have a motion uh, for the ordinance? Trustee Kumar? I'll make that motion. Okay, we have a second. Trustee Corkery? I will second. Okay, questions or comments? Okay, Kirk Konecki. Trustee Salella? <laughs> yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Corkery? Yes. Trustee Kumar? Yes. Trustee uh, Kozar? Again, since I have a liquor license, I will recuse myself. Thank you. President Kazel? Yes. Okay, so we will do away with that license. Okay, item 7B is also first reading. An ordinance of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, reducing the number of Class X liquor licenses. Manager Harlan. The ODM previously located at 1033 North Villa Avenue closed for business in 2022. Pursuant to Section 3-320 of the Villa Park Municipal Code, the Class X license is forfeited and needs to be removed from the liquor licenses that are issued and available in the village. With, with approval of this ordinance, there will be no Class X licenses. The Local Liquor Control Commission recommends approval of this ordinance. Okay. Trustee Kumar. I would again like to make a motion to waive the first reading. Okay, so we have a motion to waive the first reading. Do we have a second? Trustee Corkery? Okay, any questions or comments? Mm. Clerk Konecki. Trustee Silella? Yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Kumar? Yes. Trustee Corkery? Yes. Trustee Kozar? Again, since I have a liquor license, I will recuse myself. Thank you. President Kazone. Yes. Okay, so do we have a motion for the ordinance uh, to do away with the Class X license? Trustee Kumar? Mm -hmm. I will make that motion. Do we have a second? I must second. Trustee Corkery? <laughs> I do have questions. Huh? Okay. Um, the Class X, is this the only, it looks like the only... Probably this is the only uh, Class X license that we have. Well, what and makes when, that specific? Pardon me? I'm just, what, what makes that? Um, it was for a, um, like, a arena okay. or, you know, a rental okay. hall like that. And when the Liquor Commission met, one of the recommendations was to do away with the X license. So that will be on, probably in January, we'll, uh, we'll bring that up. Once we get the minutes from that, um, okay. the Liquor Commission meeting uh, published, then we'll, uh, we'll set that up. Do you need a separate license for an arena, for instance? Pardon me? In the state of Illinois, is that required a separate license? No, I think it was just in Villa Park okay. who passed that. Yeah, because each town has its own licensing on how they characterize them. Okay. Okay. Any questions or comments? Clerk Konecki. Okay, Trustee Murphy? Yes. Uh, Trustee Corkery? Yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Kumar? Yes. Trustee Salella? Yes. Trustee Kozar? Again, recusing myself. Thank you, President Kazone. Yes. 
Okay, move on to item 8A, second reading of ordinances. It's an ordinance levying taxes for the fiscal year of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, commencing the first day of January 2022 and ending on the 31st day of December 2022, collectible in the year 2023. Andrew King, Mary Harling. This ordinance sets the rate for property taxes levied for the property value assessed December 31, 2022. Collection of the revenue will be in calendar year 2023. Because the proposed increase in the property tax is 4.7%, which is less than 5%, no public hearing is required. There is a lengthy memo and information about the tax levy and the sort and what it goes towards. You'll notice that a lot of it goes towards paying off the or getting the village um, caught up on the pensions for the fire and police board. Uh, one other thing we it, it goes towards is debt service, uh, and then the small amount is transferred is uh, sent directly to uh, the general fund. Uh, if you have any questions, myself or uh, Finance Director Chuck Howard are available. Okay, thank you. Okay, do we have a motion for the ordinance? Mm. Trustee Kumar? I will make that motion. Okay, do we have a second? second. Trustee Slala. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, Clerk Kornecki, please. Okay, Trustee Patrick? No. Trustee uh, Murphy? Yes. Trustee Corkery? Yes. Trustee Kozar? No. Trustee Salella? Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Kumar? Yes. President Kazone? Yes. Okay, so that passes. Go on to item 8B is an ordinance adopting a budget for the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, for all corporate purposes in lieu of an annual appropriation ordinance for the fiscal year commencing January 1st, 2023, and ending on December 31st, 2023. Andrew Harling. The village's fiscal year 2023 budget ordinance allocates funds for con continued provision of Villa services, as well as signif significant capital investments as discussed during the village's November 7th special board meeting and budget workshop. The draft of the proposed budget has been available for public inspection at Village Hall and on the village's website. The budget contains the 12 month period from January 1, 2023 to December 31, 2023. The first reading of the fiscal 2023 budget fiscal year 2023 budget ordinance occurred on December 12th. Staff recommends approval of this ordinance. There in the, there's also a um, two page memo provided in the packet. And at the end of the packet, there are specific uh, motions or amendments that could be offered to address specific uh, items that had been uh, talked, that I had been approached by village, uh, by trustees. Uh, and those will cover the uh, specific items of increasing money for tree trimming or for construction of sidewalks in the 50-50 program. And that's that's my entire spiel. Okay, <laughs> Sorry. Right, thank you. Okay, do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. Okay. Trustee Lowell, do we have a second? Trustee Co uh, Kozar? I'll second. Okay, questions or comments? Okay. Seeing none, Clerk Konecki, please. Okay, Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Corkery? Yes. Trustee Kozar? Yes. Trustee Kumar? Yes. Trustee Salella? Yes. President Kazone? Yes. Okay, we'll move on to item 9A, resolutions. It's a resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving the final change order number one to the contract with Arrow Road Construction Company of Elk Grove, Illinois, for construction of the Rebuild <coughs> Illinois resurfacing project for a net deduction in the amount of $28,910 and 25 cents. Major Harling. The village has a contract with Arrow Road Construction Company of Elk Grove, Illinois in the amount of $371,727.21 for the construction of the Rebuild uh, Illinois Resurfacing Project, which included roads on uh, uh, Washington, El part of Elm, uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, not Washington, Wisconsin. It was a W word. <laughs> it's one, one of those W words. Yeah. It's a north-south street. Um, anyway, Wisconsin, uh, Elm Division, in that area. So that's it. Okay, anyway, um, the, uh, the proposed, uh, proposed final change order number one consists of the final balancing of the contract quantities as measured in the field. The net amount of the proposed final change order number one is a deduction in the amount of $28,910.25 
for an adjusted contract amount of $342,816.96. Staff recommends approval of this change order. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a motion? Trustee Patrick. Mr. President, I'd like to make that motion. Okay. Do we have a second? Trustee Kumar? I will second that motion. Okay. Questions or comments? Just good. Yeah, they did excellent work. That's, I just wanted to throw that in, and I don't know if you wanted to add anything, but I'm very happy with the product. Yep. Trustee Kumar? Um, I have a couple of questions. So the, the change, I mean, this is good. It's always good to get money back. But the, the question is, was there a contingency? Is that why we keep having this? Or is it just, um, how, why does it come back? Let Director Guerrero kind of explain how the contracts work. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, on this project, there was no contingency as much um, as the funding source. Um, what it is is really the final measured quantities in place. Uh, additionally, on this project, we are looking at doing what's called uh, subgrade improvements, uh, where we, we milled off the top two inches, but we were expecting or anticipating more of the asphalt underneath being in bad shape where we have to cut out and repair. Uh, once we milled off the surface, it was determined it was not as in bad of a shape as we thought. Um, and we alternate, alter, use an alternate material like a sand mix to fill in some cracks, which then reduced a lot of the quantities that we were thinking needed for the repair of the base, um, which created the savings on this contract. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Trustee Solal. Uh, will these savings be rolled back into another project? Yes. The, all this money was uh, money that was um, generated from the rebuild Illinois bonds, and it was um, allocated to Villa Park. Uh, so that money stays in our pot um, and we're, we are allocating these additional resources uh, we do have another phase that we are planning to go out for bid here shortly um, rolling those phases into it we just haven't released those bids because we're looking at um, some additional work mm. now that we have some savings um, and if you remember this bid actually was about a hundred thousand dollars less than what we were estimating mm. so we've generated about one hundred twenty thousand dollars that can now be allocated towards other roads in the community that's great thank you any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, Clerk Kornacki, please. Okay, Trustee uh, Salela? Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Corkery? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Kozar? Yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Kumar? Yes. President Kazon? Yes. Okay, going on item 9B is a resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving an engineering services agreement with CDM Smith, Inc. of Chicago, Illinois, for the grade separation feasibility study in an amount not to exceed $97,624. Major Harling. Included in the Village of Villa Park strategic plan is the advancement of studies for, the, for additional railroad grade separation for the community. This uh, engineering agreement with CDM Smith is to review several locations in the community to assess the nature and demand <clears throat> both vehicles and non-motorized users to identify the most feasible location location for a permanent grade separation across the Union Pacific Railroad. The study will include review of the existing conditions along with selective outreach workshop to gather additional context of locations to provide evaluations of locations and alternatives. This study will assist the village to focus efforts on the advancing possibility of grade separation to help secure funding for a future project. Staff recommends approval of this engineering agreement with CDM Smith of Chicago, Illinois for the grade separation feasibility. And this is a not to exceed amount of $97,624. Myself and uh, Director Guerra uh, uh, participated in a phone call. I did one phone call, he did several to try to make sure that there was not a way to get this project for less money. We assumed originally that this would be, what, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 study, but uh, they have, uh, as uh, even, uh, Mr. Amore pointed out, had some successes in the past. So the agreement is proposed in the FY23 budget to be funded with street improvement funds, and uh, it, it satisfies one of our short-term complex goals. Staff recommends approval of this uh, resolution. Thank you. Okay, do we have a motion on the resolution? I'll make that motion. Trustee Corkery, do I have a second? Trustee Murphy. I'll second that motion. Okay. <coughs> Questions or comments? <coughs> Trustee Kumar. Um, I'm wondering, okay, so the, the, it looks like we are redoing some of the stuff we did before, and that is adding to the cost. 
is that part of the cost and are they doing something more um, that they didn't do in the, in the past with regards to this project? Uh, what, I, I'm going to let uh, I mean, Director Guerrero, do you, what uh, specifically, are you talking about the, the, the committee, the bicycle pedestrian and... Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, this is a proposal to get a engineering study with, um, you know, with a, uh, some and, and a, is there an a greater level of. Because I think we had some community members come out and talk about the advantage of maybe um, contracting this to a smaller space or something. It, this is what I understood. But maybe I'm yeah. not understanding it correctly. Yeah. Director Guerrero, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so thank you. Uh, and, and yes, I think the Bicycle and, and <coughs> Safety Committee has uh, obviously been a, a priority of theirs to get this going and looking at it. Uh, the reason this study is a little bit more quantitative, uh, we're looking at actual quantitative factors to determine uh, locations. Uh, I know as Maury spoke, uh, there was some discussion. We felt this was the best approach to kind of do an evaluation of all locations so they're not exclusive. But there's several factors when you go into these. You have the pedestrian factor, you have the vehicle factor, and there's kind of competing interests on those. Um, so this study is to help narrow the village's focus uh, and to narrow it down into specific locations with the most advantageous to acquire funding in the future. Um, as Mr. Moray's pointed out several times, there is grant possibility through the federal and state. However, there's a lot of key components that you have to hit and key measurable factors. Um, and this helps start building that case uh, so that we can go after those grants so that we have quantifiable data that says due to the number of, of vehicle crossings here, grades or number of trains, pedestrian crossings, safety factors, um, along with additional costs that will be associated in terms of how much right away we may need uh, of purchasing properties. Um, and so this, this study is, is while it's kind of ex expensive, will help guide us to be pinpoint accurate and when we go after funding. Um, there is select outreach to, and that was the intent is to bring them the board on along with probably the subcommittee uh, to bring in their ideas and their opinions um, so that we have the best answer and the best approach for the community um, as we go after this. Um, as we all know, railroads are, are very timely, uh, time consuming and costly to get completed. So. Uh, while it's a little bit more money up front, I, I believe it will save us money in the back end of actually going after the most advantageous locations, um, both vehicle and pedestrian. Um, and I think from this study, we could then pinpoint, do we want to go after vehicle separation um, as there's key components uh, with uh, emergency responses as we have no crossings that are separated at both locations, they have to go to 83. Um, and there are, is it more advantageous to go after pedestrians with the, the metro station? or is there a combination that we can attend at one location? So it's to try to wrangle in all those possibilities um, so that we can we can have the best advantage moving forward. And so what is the process of the study? So anyway, there are they going to involve all parties, the, the CDM, Smith, um, uh, on the get-go? Are they going to be involved with um, setting it up along with the village, or how is that? Going Cor correct. Oh, okay. uh, in the proposal, there is uh, the select outreach early on, mm -hmm. uh, where they would get the opinions of the board of what they, the board's opinions on where we believe we probably would work through that maybe in a COW discussion, um, and then have some meetings with the pedestrian and, and bicyclist committee, um, and, and gather that information to get. That's where the context comes around, um, as there's several different ways to do it early on, and then from there, then they can start assessing some of the more quantifiable data, the, the um, number of trains, the number of cars, vehicle counts, those sort of things. Okay. okay. There's a fair amount of federal money out there for train stuff in the next couple of years. We just need to have the stuff ready. We just need to have the studies and the, the pieces that they're going to look for to get some of that money to get a project of this nature funded. You're trying to set up the stage for everything at exactly. this point, is what you're saying. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Mr. Kozar. Mr. Amore had suggested the possibility of separating this and doing, I think the suggestion was, if I understood it correctly, um, do a study on just the pedestrian side and then just the vehicle side. 
I mean, is that correct? Yeah, um, so basically, well, uh, I can't really, <laughs> you can't <laughs> explain it around. Hmm. But yeah, I think that was the gist of it. But you, uh, Dr. The, Guerrero uh, wants to uh, Yeah, what is it. the possibility of separating it, and would that affect the cost of the study? Uh, we can look into that. I don't think it would grace it, um, dramatically change the cost. Obviously, a lot of the factors we're looking at, number of trains a day, um, some of those factors are consistent for both vehicles and pedestrians. Um, so I think if we're going to look at locations, it's mm -hmm. prudent to just look at both of them at the same time versus solely looking at locations for pedestrians and solely looking at locations for vehicles. Obviously, in our community, we have three major roadways that would be the most convenient to look at um, for vehicle crossings. Um, and then we have up to three to four pedestrian crossing locations. But however, I'd say due to the, the length of our community being in width, they're kind of confined in the same area. So that look would probably just be advantageous to look at both at one time. I would say uh, the factor would be moving forward. If there's advantage of going after one or the other, not both at the same time would probably be the decision. I, I think it would be prudent in your feasibility side, your preliminary side to look at both at the same time because you're looking at similar factors for both pedestrian and vehicles at the same, so. So have you considered, or has anybody considered what the ultimate cost to put in a underpass or overpass? I think depending on- Ballpark? Uh, about 10 to $13 million. 10 to 13 million? And then- uh, for, for vehicles, pedestrians are dependent um, a, a little bit, but you're still talking millions by the time you get in. And then Manager Harlan, you had said there's a lot of grant money out there. Mm -hmm. All right, say it ends up costing $15 million. Mm -hmm. Are we thinking that there are grants to cover $10 million of that? You know, $15 million of that, $5 million of that, just to try to start thinking along these lines. The assumption is that we would look for federal funding that would cover the, the bulk of the cost, 80 90% of the cost, because we're not going to be able to come up with the other matching funds unless it's a heavily federally subsidized. But, it, you know, the railroads are federally um, uh, 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 um, chartered. So they do, that is not unusual to get a heavy uh, federal subsidy. This, and that's one of the reasons why we worked with this firm because they've gone through that process a couple of times. And, uh, but, you know, there, there are a lot of pieces to that, including, as uh, Mr. Amori uh, mentioned, uh, maintaining a good relationship with our federal legislators. So. And then Mr. Amori also mentioned uh, a multi-billion dollar uh, allotment of money that's coming out or being applications are being taken as early as March. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably something that we wouldn't be prepared to, to do at that point because I think the study took nine months to a year to to do. Go ahead, uh, to answer your question, yes, that's probably correct. Uh, those applications for the federal side are pretty involved um, and require a lot of detailed analysis, like cost benefit ratio, uh, those sort of factors, which incorporates total costs. And, and we don't have any location defined well enough to anticipate those costs at this time. Uh, that's the goal of this study is so that we can start working on that location. Um, and if you don't mind, I can add a little bit uh, as part of the out uh, the deliverables in this and their recommendations is to also identify what funding sources may be available to the village that we could seek moving forward based on their analysis and their recommendations. So that's a component of part of the recommendations is what federal and state funding, because there's also a, a state component in there uh, for, for grade separation, rail crossing safety components that may be eligible and we may be able to stack some grants. Um, and, and so that's part of this uh, study as well is to identify which funding sources are available at this time for us. Then my last piece of it was the, what we're voting on is a not to exceed number. Um, I mean, do we have a contract that is saying that they are going to provide this information for the 97 624? Or is it subject to change that we may, although we're approving 97,000 today, possibly, um, that number could change and we won't get the full report that we think that we're getting. Uh, this was a, a lump sum, so it's for that report based on the deliverables proposed in the, um, in the submittal for the proposals. 
uh, that is incorporated into the contract, I believe, with the, the how the contract specified that that proposal is incorporated into our contract. So those deliverables in that scope would be required for that 96. I, I, so any change would be a significant uh, change in the scope of what we're asking, and then that would need to be brought before the board for that change to for inclusion. So as long as we don't change the scope, mm -hmm. we're getting what we bargained for. Correct. Thanks. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, Clerk Konecki. Thank you, Director. Okay, Trustee Kumar? Yes. Trustee Salella? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Patrick? Yes. Trustee Corkery? Yes. Trustee Kosar? Yes. President Cassell? Yes. Okay, we have removed item 9C from this evening's. Uh, item 10, public comments and non-agenda items. We have anyone signed up? I just have Joe Amori had one more item to talk about. <clears throat> Just uh, printed out the new metro schedule that was made available for the West Line for um, effective uh, December 5th. I appeared here last week uh, asking that the warming <laughs> shelter hours be expanded for um, the west end of the metro station. I was uh, one thing I was mistaken was that I had uh, had discussions with um, Parks and Rec, and they had said that uh, they were pretty firm about not wanting to open on weekends. Uh, they wanted it from, uh, I believe it was from 5 in the morning, Monday through Friday, to about 7 in the evening. So I was pretty surprised the other day when I went by at 9 o'clock and the door was unlocked. So I thought, well, this is pretty nice that they've got it unlocked. And I noticed also that they had a sign on the window, and I thought the sign said, 5 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. Well, the light was bad. I had taken a picture, and when I went back to look at the picture, it actually says that the time locks will only operate between 5 a.m. and 11 a.m., 11.30 a.m. So they've actually shortened the amount of time that uh, that warming area is going to be open. We need to be more you know, accommodating to the, our Metro customers and the residents that want to go downtown. We have another weekend coming up now where the temperatures are going to be brutal. We're talking overnight lows below zero, daytime temperatures in the single digits. We are looking into putting the heating lamps, but we cannot leave these people out in the cold. There are just too many variables. The train is blocking, a guy gets off a train, he can't get across to get his car out of the parking lot because it might be a stop train, what is that person to do? If a train is late or canceled, which happens a lot, what is that person to do? I mean, at, at some point, are we, I, I, are we exposing ourselves to liability because of an arbitrary decision not to unlock the warming house because the people who are responsible for, for cleaning it want to keep it clean? So I really was disappointed. I was hoping that we could get more action from our village officials to be more accommodating to the people who use that as a gateway to come to the village, work here, visit, or go downtown. So please look into this and see if we can get that, especially with this weekend being Christmas, see if we can get that station opened up so that these poor people won't have to stand outside. You know, frostbite can occur at zero degrees in just about 15 minutes. <coughs> It, it's unacceptable, and I would really hope that we could do better. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Any other public comments and non-agenda items? Thank you. Okay. okay. So we will move on to Village Commission reports, uh, Traffic and Safety, Parks and Recreation, Community Fund Commission, Environmental Concern Commission, Bike Pedestrian Transit Advisory Subcommittee, uh, Circle Preservation Commission and the Board of Fire and Police Commission minutes. Um, do we have a motion to approve all of these? To uh, okay, to accept the minutes uh, as they were delivered. Trustee Corkery? I make that motion. Okay. Trustee Kumar, I'll second. second okay, any questions or discussions? Trustee Patrick? Uh, is this something that we can expect to see every month uh, for the commissions? The manager Harling? That was my plan. Okay. 
unless they're you know unless you don't want to see it but i wanted to test this and see and if there's other comments questions uh when they have events you know posters that sort of thing that was my that's my goal is to i know we have liaisons but just to give a little bit more share a little bit more information with the with the the uh, board of trustees just goes there i like that you're putting these on there i think it adds to you know our idea of transparency i know that you can dig around the website and potentially find these i'm not sure um i've been unsuccessful many times trying to find minutes and uh usually just go to the couple of meetings that are recorded which are not these so i think it's great that you're going to start putting these up here and it allows everybody to see what's going on in all our commissions and hopefully get more involvement and just you know um just the knowledge of kind of what's going on behind the scenes so thank you for uh, taking that initiative and listening to some of the comments of the other trustees that wanted this up here good trustee murphy yes i don't have any problem with the minutes being on there but i don't understand why the board would have to approve them because they're approved by the commissions the commissioners the liaisons participate as well and if we come back and don't approve one of them, then what's the reverse process? Then it goes back to the commission and you're going in a circle. Yeah, it, it, according to our, our attorney, we're not really approving them. We're just accepting them as they were you know, presented to us. Um, I don't know if we have to do that, but you know, as long as we're getting them up here, we can do it. And you know, in the future, we can discuss it. Maybe just have it on here as a, as a report and just leave it at that. Well, but the first time, so we, we're, ju we're just voting thing. to accept them as, as they've been you know, given to us. I don't have any problem with the planning and zoning is missing. Yes, it is. Oh, thanks. Okay. Okay. Just goes out. The ordinance that's proposed under the traffic and safety, that's just like a duplicate. It's it, not. It, it hasn't. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're talking. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, please. I'm, I'm supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, that has not come to the board yet that is a proposal from them so you that gives you an idea of what's coming okay well that too is super helpful too that you know that it's coming our way and we get more than a weekend to review it so thank you okay any other questions comments Kokonecki. okay trustee murphy yes trustee corkery yes trustee patrick Yes. Trustee Kumar. Yes. Trustee Salella. Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Kozar. Yes. President Casal. Yes. Okay, we move on to item 12 now, which is the village clerk's report. Uh, no report. Thank okay. you. Uh, village trustees report. We'll start on my right. Trustee Patrick. Uh, thank you. First, mm -hmm. I, I would just like to touch base on um, what uh, Joe Mori was speaking about uh, just not so long ago. The question that I have for the village is why can't we extend our hours at the warming station and what does that look like? What does that process look like for the village? It, well, I don't know if you want to uh, have Director Kola come up. I, you can have Director Kola come up, but I'm going to say something before he comes up. We're going to look into getting some extended hours. There is no heaters on the north side. We investigated that right today. There is heater. There are heaters on the south side. So he and I are discussing how to proceed and I'll let him have it there are some notable it's going to take some staff time and there's going to be there's risk to opening those those uh, locations out uh, lo locations up um, we can't provide 24/ uh, 7 there will be no staff eyes in the building all the time so we're gonna to have to figure out a way to make it safe for the people who are in there and then it's going to be more cleaning uh, for the staff because there are people who come in there graffiti and um, you know human waste has been a problem so uh, good evening um, so um, when Metra uh, had a, the ticket agent there uh, the ticket agent would be there till 11 30 12 12 o'clock and that's uh, after she left that's when the building would close so the building uh, the hours haven't changed since Metra has uh, uh, not provided an attendant anymore so that we do have a warming area the vestibule on the west side of the of the station that is open uh, I don't know why it should have been 1230 uh, but that's been how it's been for uh, past several years since I've been here 
Uh, so there's the, the station was open, then the, the attendant left, locked up the station, and then we reopened a vestibule from 3 to 7 o'clock at night. Uh, we did try before in the past to, to leave it open a little later, and that's when um, some of the uh, vandalism would, would occur. So when Metra did um, pull out their attendant and there's no longer a attendant there, we still have the west side of the vestibule that's open from 5.30 in the morning till, well, 11.30, it should be 12.30. And then it reopens again for the morning, for the evening commute, excuse me, from 3 to 7 p.m. Okay. Um, is that vest that vestibule is only, what, it's probably less than 10 by 10. Is that yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's about right, I'm 10 by 10. Have you had previous, um, Incidents happen uh, in those time frames in that small 10 by 10 vestibule that would make us close that up any earlier or reduce those hours. The, uh, we've had we've had incidents where there's been vandalism that has occurred, uh, but the hours have been the same since I've been here for, uh, for the. Well, ex let me backtrack. The station was open when they had the attendant. The, the attendant would come in at 5:30 in the morning open and sell tickets and they would and then she would leave at 12 12 30 lock the station up then the station was locked until three o'clock and then we would open it and leave it open from three to seven so what's our process right now it just stays locked so uh up installed a uh timer on the locks and uh the timer is now it's open from 5 30 in the morning till 11 30 we'll have to adjust and open till 12 30 as that's how it was and then it opens up again, then it locks at 12.30. And then it, the timer uh, opens up again at three o'clock and is open from three to seven in the evening. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, well, thank you, that's all Thanks, I heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but lastly, um, you know, we do have a lot of snow coming our way soon. Um, and um, I, I do believe that uh, possibly extending those hours slightly or being able to, um, I, I believe that we probably don't have, a, do we have a camera system in there as well that would be able to monitor the activity in that vestibule? I don't, we were looking into that. We're looking into that because there are some cameras in there. Whose cameras they are, do they get, do they, are they in our system? We don't know. They're, we also have some, so we're, we're going to, see what we can what there is there. there there are cameras on the on the platform and the they go to the police station but in the station i don't i don't think so so if there were uh if there were an incident the police department would be able to utilize those camera feeds to investigate uh who was at the scene on the platform, on the but platform. you want to go ahead and you probably can. Correct. As Manager Harlan had indicated, there are cameras on the platform. There's also one across the street, but it has a wide view and it is from a good distance. So it's hard to really discern any tangible viewing uh, other than what occurs in the parking lot across the street to the west, as well as in the parking lot for the, for the metro station itself. Okay. Thank you. Um, besides that, no. Uh, it, it, uh, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Um, just remind everybody that, uh, you know, uh, cherish the ones you love. Be with them for the holidays. You never know when uh, this could be your last day. So uh, give them a hug. Take care of each other and uh, look out for one another. But uh, everybody, uh, Happy Holidays and uh, wish you a Happy New Year as well. Thank you. Thank you. Just goes out. Um, yeah. Piggybacking on that, I want to wish everybody Hanukkah started yesterday, so wish everybody a happy Hanukkah who celebrates that. Ha um, same for Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, happy New Year as well. Um, I am more optimistic for this upcoming year as Villa Park goes than I have been for a long time, and I, I'm delighted to be able to say that. I think that our level of customer service has improved uh, remarkably. Our level of transparency has improved. Um, our accessibility to government has improved. Um, I'm very happy with our, our new manager, Harline. I'm very happy with the new hires that have come on board and our existing staff and how I see a lot of teamwork going on and how people are working together. Um, I've heard more positive comments about Villa Park government in the last four to five months than I have in the last few years. And I can't tell you how happy that makes me. Um, 
there was a time where I felt that it was us versus them. And I can actually honestly say that I feel it's just us, all of us together working for a common goal. And I'm very pleased to be able to report that. And uh, wishing a continued trend for next year, I don't see why we wouldn't. So um, very positive. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you. Trust us a little. Thank you. Uh, just happy holidays, so enjoy yourself and be safe. Thank you. Trust Kumar. Yeah, I'd also like to wish everybody happy holidays. Um, stay safe. Um, um, stay out of the cold. Uh, frostbite, someone mentioned that today. Please um, be careful and monitor your time in the cold um, and um, try to stay safe and have fun. Yeah. Trust Corkery. Just like to say uh, congratulations to the cast, the crew, the staff involved with Merry Mutiny. I saw it on Sunday. It was a good show. And also, uh, happy holidays and see you all next year. Josie Murphy. Wow, everybody got lots of happy holidays, so we got a full dose. But again, wishing everyone happy, healthy, and safe holidays and uh, looking forward to the new year. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Um, I don't have a lot either. Um, I just I'd like to thank our staff. Um, I think everybody. It was a, a, a hard year this year. We had a lot of changes, but staff worked real hard. We all worked together. Like Trusty Kozar said, you know, we're working together um, with all of our new staff, all of our existing staff. Like to just you know, uh, appreciation to everybody for all their hard work. Um, there is a lot of snow coming, a lot of cold weather, so. Um, not only you know keep track of your house, but if you have neighbors, elderly neighbors, try to make sure that um, that they're doing okay. Uh, help out shoveling if you can. Make sure that um, they've got enough food in the house and um, keep track of them. Fire yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. Make sure if we do get a lot of snow, if you can keep the fire hydrants clear, and help our fire department out uh, mm -hmm. in that. Um, and obviously, uh, have everybody have a great holiday season merry christmas happy hanukkah um happy new year to everybody and we'll see you next year and hopefully things uh will have a better year we had a good year this year but there'll be a better year next year on the ninth i'm sorry the ninth and the ninth yes our next meeting is uh, january 9th and we'll go to the village manager I'll try to make it fast. Uh, first of all, I want to thank our uh, police, our fire department, and all of the fire departments that participate or cooperated on the recent uh, fire uh, on Summit. And I think they, it's a tough job, and you do an excellent, an excellent job of it. Thank you, and my compassion for what you guys have to go through on a daily basis. I also wanted to thank the Villa Park Police Benevolent Association for their annual food drive that was held on December 10th, 2022, at Jewel uh, grocery store in Oscar, uh, across the street with the donations the association was able to purchase $737 of non-perishable food give $696 in gift cards and distribute 90 boxes of food using five trucks to two local pantries at the New Bible Chapel and St. Pius Church and then uh, I am going to work with our staff and uh, send out an email to both UP Union Pacific and Metra staff to see if we can make uh, and our staff to see if we can make some improvements but everything that uh, um, director Gola, Gola said is is true it's a difficult situation since Metra has pulled out to save funds we haven't seen um, they haven't shared that savings with us nor, nor do I really know how they would do that but that's the that that's why it's hard to staff we don't have staff to stay in there so we'll look at some options to try and keep that open especially in this next uh, stretch of really really cold weather so okay. more more to come okay thank you uh, we have no executive session uh, items for this evening so with that, we will go to adjournment. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Trustee Kozar? I will make a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Trustee Patrick? Yep. I'll okay, second. all in favor? Uh, Aye. Right. Okay, we will close our meeting. We'll see you back here January 9th. Uh, have a happy, safe holiday season.